Hey everyone, my name is Troy from Tech Games Etc. Now, I ran across this article uh, for IGN yesterday uh, about talking about how... Let me, let me get the, the exact words right. This article is going to give you five uh, reasons why five ways Modern Warfare... I mean, excuse me, Medal of Honor Warfighter is trying to stand out from all those other bro shooters. Now... They, they give you five ways, right? But sadly, IGN tries to attempt to make this sound like this is going to be something so, like, different. This experience is going to be, you know, like no other. It's like that's what they're trying to attempt. That's probably not their intentions. But to me as a reader, it's like this is going to be the same first-person shooter that everyone has played in, in some form or some fashion. And it's so funny because, forgive me if I'm ranting early, but instead of reading the article and ranting later, but I have to get this out before I forget. It's funny how, remember when I did that video about, you know, the ultimate first-person shooter, and I said, you know, it has to be set in modern times, da 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 da, da. Now, I, I think I'm going to renege on that one, take that one back. Because right now, if it's set in modern times, it's going to feel just like everything else. I commend Call of Duty for going into the future a little bit to, sp to spice things up a little bit. I know it's going to be the probably, uh, or probably it is going to be the same game, but it feels it feels like they're, they're, they're taking a, a, a different approach to, to break up the monotony. Because right now... I know I bash Transformers Fall of Cybertron, but I'm enjoying that game right now. Like, because it's just something different outside of outside of um, this modern combat first person shooter type stuff, you know? So, you know, I take that back as far as oh, it has to be, you know, in modern times, you know, this and that. It can't be set in the future. If it is, no lasers, blah, blah, blah. But. You know, if it even if it is set in modern, I mean, future times, I would like to see some type of bullets in the guns instead of lasers. But you know, that's a whole nother rant for a whole nother time. So I'm gonna go through the five things they mentioned in this article. And if you need to read the article, the article uh, I'll put in the below in the description box. But there were just some things I just had to pick apart here because you know me, you know tech games etc. I bury, you know, I, I dig for the truth and stuff. And things like that. But anyway, so their first... <laughs> I, I can't stop laughing, sorry. Their first attempt, right? They said the combat is as an emotional experience. So, <laughs> if you read paragraph one, this is, this, is, this is really... This is really something. They said, the setting allows us to focus on emotional lives of the protagonist rather than Googling at cool retro gear or futuristic hover drones. Huh. Was that a shot at Black Ops? I really don't know. But uh, I don't care about if we goggle at, at, uh, at cool retro gear or futuristic hover drones. Let me tell you something. Um, this game, this... This part they're trying to point out is how the campaign is going to be, you know, so emotional. You're this guy named, uh, what is his name? It starts with a P. I, I meant to get his name. Well, wh whatever. You're this, you're this main honcho, uh, main guy who, you know, just comes back from war. And you, you're trying to, you know, you have this emotional connection with this character. And, oh, his name is Preacher. Excuse me. Your character's name is Preacher. And, you know, he's coping with the emotional disconnect and many combat uh, veterans fine and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I think I heard this before. <laughs> I think I, I think I did. I mean, come on. Like, I don't know why would you waste your time trying to make something that is not modern, uh, modern warfare. Excuse me. Medal of Honor Warfighter. Who is going to play the campaign, really? Like I'm gonna play the campaign, cause I, you know, you know me. I'm, I do uh, a lot of in-game uh, video game movies, so I'm gonna just try to play the campaign. Campaign if it doesn't get boring, but we're, I, I guarantee you, we're not gonna see anything that's gonna be like, oh my gosh, this is Academy Award nominated right here. 
So reason number two is real combat zones. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> the third paragraph, where is that at? Okay. And it says, and I quote, looking at the big shooters this fall, Metal of Honor may actually have found a niche. A niche, niche, niche. Call of Duty is set in the near future and the recent past. Halo 4 and Borderlands 2 are sci-fi picks. What niche are they are they trying to fill? Like are you do we really think we're gonna miss like uh Oh my gosh, this is this is feeling niche. This is what I always long for. Let me tell you, I, I question Medal of Honor. I really question Medal of Honor. I didn't like Medal of Honor, what is that, 2012? I question this is gonna be like, oh my gosh, I need this. Let me because whatever you're gonna see in Medal of Honor, I guarantee you Battlefield uh Battlefield 3 is gonna cater to your needs. Like Battlefield 3 has already filled that niche. So why would you buy Medal of Honor to, uh, for real, like why would you buy Medal of Honor to fill in a, a niche, a niche, whatever, if you're already playing Battlefield 3? Really? Like, let me let me ask y'all, do y'all thirst for Medal of Honor, really, to replace Battlefield 3? I, I doubt it. I really doubt it. So number, so number uh, three, the, the, the number three uh, reason why, you know, Medal of Honor is trying to separate, you know, have a unique experience or whatever. Unusual multiplayer perspective. Now, I do agree with anybody who finds it interesting that you be able to select, uh, what is it? You, you be able to select different tiers of, you know, different divisions of the world as far as, um, like, you know, seals and, and things like that. Yeah, you can... You can play as a tier one operative from 10 different nations, you know, which is really good. But this multiplayer is still unproven to me because they say, like, you're going to have unique experience with each uh, with each nation. Um, they also said that there are, they said, with the variety of classes, weapons, and extra promising much, each country's basic class feels and plays very differently. There were six available at E3 with a total of 72 unlockable in the final game. I don't know what the, the 72 unlockable, I don't know if it's weapons, but this is where, to me, it's just unproven. To where it's like, it's like, um, I'm losing my train of thought, excuse me. It's like, I hope like each division has a lot of weapons catered that that comes from that origin that country's origin like it sounds good on paper but this is ea y'all i've been hurt too many times I, I ain't gonna lie about that i've been hurt too many times with ea and i'm not everything looks good on paper but it's still unproven and i said the the last paragraph the last paragraph in this is total bullshit where is it at? I'm sorry, I lost my place. Okay, the last paragraph, what was? Oh, all right, now, now this, is, this is so funny to me. It says, and I quote, there is another unusual facet to Warfighter, that being, that being multiplayer, being built around a buddy system in which players are paired off in teammates with teammates and encouraged uh, through gameplay advantages to help each other out. This is a very much, this is very much in keeping with the real military uh, ethos of protecting the other guys back. But how far it catches the yin of multiplayer warriors is an un is an unknown. What game doesn't have this online? Even if you play Call of Duty and you're mic'd up in TDM, you can still be paired off. I mean, there is nothing here that is that is worth like, oh my gosh, this is oh, you get to go in with your teammates, protect each other's back. That's been done before, IGN. That's been done before, EA. I mean, really. Alright. So they were talking about the 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 next the next one that was so unique. They were talking about how the media may scrutinize this uh, because you have all these tier one 
like different um different divisions of the world fighting against each other like you have the seals you have this from you know the canadian uh division or the australian division you know what i'm gonna tell you um this game is going to fly under the radar i think this game is going to definitely fly on the radar as far as just media scrutiny um that, that's just pretty much it i really don't I really don't think the media would care like, oh, the SEALs are fighting against this division of the world and things like that. I don't believe that this game is going to fly under the radar. I don't think it's going to create that much buzz, really. I, I really don't. Now, the last part. Now, the last part, it says, now, this is how you, it's going to be how it plays. And this is going to be really funny because... This is probably the dead giveaway of it's not going to be anything different. It's, it says it is using a frostbite engine, and yes, the game does not. Uh, the, the game does look really, really good. Whether the extra time working with the engine will follow Danger Close to get more out of Frostbite Two than Dice did with Battlefield Three remains to be seen. Frostbite is Dice's creation, although of course Danger Close will have enjoyed the input of Patrick. A uh, Sutherland, uh, executive vice president of EA Gamers and formerly head of DICE. This is why I believe this is the same. This is right here. This this paragraph right here. I don't believe it's going to be any different from what we've seen from Battlefield 3. What else can you do with the Frostbite 2 engine that we haven't seen before? And this is why I don't think they should have relied so much on the Frostbite 2 engine because... When I see the trailer, uh, when I see the trailer for Medal of Honor Warfighter, I see Battlefield 3. And that's it. I don't believe that Medal of Honor is going to be so unique, so regardless of what this article says, they're just trying to attempt to make this thing sound like none other. They're trying to attempt it. I don't know if that's their intentions, but I don't believe this is going to be that exciting. So... There you go. There you have it. There go my rant today. Uh, tell me what you think, community. Are you looking forward to uh, Medal of Honor? Are you Are you going to pass on it? I think I'm going to pass. I'm, I think I'm going to buy it. But I hope that uh, multiplayer has limited access so I can just review the multiplayer. I don't want to use my code. I don't think I, it's going to be worth it. You know, but we'll see what happens. But just go ahead and leave your comments in the comment section. And if you like what you saw today, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. It really helps out a lot. And there go all my contact information. See you later. Thanks a lot.